All right, welcome to the Young Turks. Shake your girl, Anna Grisberry. So, uh, <laughs> not only do we have an excellent Young Turks for you guys today, but uh, we have an excellent uh, slate of programming on TYT Network uh, today. So, first, uh, oh, I got a great told you on Trump coming up as the first story. You're going to love it. Okay, uh, later, uh, Trump's hiding. He's hiding. We're going to find him. <laughs> what do you mean he's we're, hiding? We're I wish he was him. hiding. <laughs> I know. No, you'll see, you'll see, okay? Um, and then uh, the Ilhan Omar controversy, it has erupted now. Presidential yeah. candidates are weighing in, Republican hypocrisy will be exposed. But I have a unique, interesting angle. Oh, I'm oh. not in the mood for your inter interesting angles today. Oh, I got a lot of them, so sorry. <laughs> sorry, buckle up for interesting <laughs> angles. Okay. okay, third hour of the Young Turks. Uh, Nir Tandon, head of Center for American Progress. Okay, so we're gonna have a very interesting <laughs> Medicare uh, policy discussion there. Should it be Medicare for all or Medicare extra for all? That's their plan, what does that mean? What does that mean? We're gonna find out later on the Young Turks. Uh, don't miss any part of this show, okay? Uh, then post game where Anna gets redemption and I have extra. Yes. Okay, and I have extra <laughs> trippy com <laughs> comments about housing. <laughs> okay, relevant and then wait till you get to the trippy yes. comments. Okay, all right, so that's in the. the Been waiting for this all week. Okay, that's the last half hour of the Young Turks. That's for members only, tyt.com slash join to become a member. And then uh, later tonight, a special old school with uh, me, Ida Rodriguez, and Anna Kasparian. Damn, and that just happened, mm -hmm. or is about to happen. Okay, get all of our uh, shows, we're like a progressive Netflix at tyt.com slash join. Fine, you gonna try it out for free for a week, tyt.com slash trial, okay? So we gotta, oh, and on top of all that, also in the third hour, the second guest I have is, here come on, Jetta. To talk about the madness going on in West Virginia, also regarding Ilhan Omar. All right, uh, Casper, go. All right. During Michael Cohen's testimony before the House Oversight Committee, he made a number of allegations against Donald Trump, including some allegations about how Trump was trying to hide his pretty terrible grades. Take a look. When I say con man, I'm talking about a man who declares himself brilliant but directed me to threaten his high school, his colleges, and the college board to never release his grades or SAT scores. As I mentioned, I'm giving the committee today copies of a letter I sent at Mr. Trump's direction, threatening these schools with civil and criminal actions if Mr. Trump's grades or SAT scores were ever disclosed without his permission. The irony wasn't lost on me at the time that Mr. Trump in 2011 had strongly criticized President Obama for not releasing his grades. As you can see in exhibit seven, Mr. Trump declared, let him show his records after calling President Obama a terrible student. Okay, so we're about to get to some fun Trump videos in just a minute, but uh, following those allegations and following uh, the disclosure of that letter, uh, a number of the schools that Trump went to have come forward and have confirmed or corroborated what Michael Cohen had to say. So I'm gonna give you an example of uh, some of the former uh, administrators who worked at uh, the New York uh, Military Academy. That was the military academy that Trump was sent to by his father after his father realized that his son is um, an idiot. So uh, he, let me give you a statement from Evan Jones, who was the headmaster of this school. He says, quote, the superintendent of the New York Military Academy came to me in a panic because he had been accosted by prominent wealthy alumni of the school who were Trump's friends and who wanted to keep his record secret. Jeffrey Coverdale uh, said, you need to go grab that record and deliver it to me because I need to deliver it to them. Again, this is Evan Jones who was a headmaster at the school. All right, let me begin to rip into Donald Trump in the most fun ways imaginable. Now, I told you, I've been saying the release the transcripts from day one. And by day one, I mean in, uh, the, in the primaries, uh, in the Republican primaries back in 2015, 2016. Because this guy's a dummy, 
Now, look, uh, that alone is okay, interesting. We shouldn't have an incredibly unintelligent president. Uh, but more importantly, he's a spoiled little child. He never earned anything, and he's a pathological liar. And to me, the, uh, the part that set me off, and in fact, this goes back years. I said this when I was on MSNBC. When he asked for Obama's transcripts, he didn't believe that he could have been that good a student at Columbia or Harvard. Uh, well, and there was no reason to believe that when he, he was the head of the Harvard Law Review. That means he was a fantastic student. But Trump didn't believe it, why? I'll fill in the blanks for you, it's not complicated because Obama's black. Can I jump in for a second? Uh, so I remember Trump uh, making those arguments about Obama, both about his birth certificate and also about his grades. And I dug up uh, one of the videos where he uh, gave Obama the option of revealing what his grades were in return for some money. And I got great details on what a baby Trump is and trying to hide his record. So don't miss any of this. All right, let's watch. President Obama is the least transparent president in the history of this country. There's never been anything like it. We know very little about our president. I'm very honored to have gotten him to release his long form birth certificate or whatever it may be. Now, many, many people have questions and very serious questions. I have a deal for the president, a deal that I don't believe he can refuse and I hope he doesn't. If Barack Obama opens up and gives his college records and applications, and if he gives his passport applications and records, I will give to a charity of his choice, inner city children in Chicago, American Cancer Society, AIDS research, anything he wants, a check immediately for $5 million. Okay, so there's Trump uh, trying to get Obama to release his grades. And remember, he did graduate top of his class. He was part of the Harvard Law Review. I mean, it's all the evidence that you need. But anyway, go ahead. Trump. Okay, I've got a similar challenge for Donald Trump. So let me get to that and then uh, we'll uh, document more of his crying. Um, so, a uh, million dollar challenge for Donald Trump, uh, not kidding. Uh, so, uh, my grades versus your grades at Penn. We both went to Wharton undergrad, so it's a good apples to apples, okay? Um, and if you release all of your records, your high school grades, which are, oh, sure, laughably pathetic, uh, which will show that you never should have even gotten into Fordham. Then release your Fordham grades, which will show you you clearly couldn't have transferred into Penn. And then release your Penn grades, which shows that you probably barely graduated with the great help of your dad and all of his millionaire friends. And you release your SAT scores. And uh, you say, okay, you accept my uh, challenge. Uh, if you have better grades than me, I'll give you a million dollars. If you had uh, if I have better grades than you, you give me a million dollars. If you release all those things and agree to this deal, we definitely have a bet. Now, would a million dollars, do I have a million dollars? No, you'll bankrupt me and take everything I have, okay? What are you doing right now? He, okay, I go for it, Donald Trump. You, you know how ecstatic MAGA would be if you bankrupted me, uh, head of the Young Turks, okay? So go for it, let's see if you got better grades than me at Penn, okay? So you don't. You won't, he has to voluntarily release the transcripts. Not if they get leaked, he has to say yes, I accept that challenge, release the, uh, the transcripts. And hey, you're supposed to be really high IQ. One of the things you're known for is being mentally stable. And and my grades were good. What are you doing? They weren't great, no, I'm ready. You're crazy. Anna, All the right, chance um, of Donald Trump having better grades than anyone, let alone me, is some hovers between 0% and negative 20%. No, 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 like I, I believe that, I believe that 100%. <laughs> I'm not worried about comparing grades here, I'm worried about your proposition. Yeah, no, no, that's why I'm, I'm making it alluring. I mean, you know how ecstatic MAGA would be if you just took everything I had? Oh my God, okay, Okay, guys. go for it, go for it, big guy, go for it. Okay, uh, but he's not gonna voluntarily release any of the transcripts because he's an idiot, he got terrible grades because his daddy got him in. He's a spoiled little baby who never earned a thing in his life. So you know what he said, this moron of morons? Uh, he said, um, you know, I heard I was uh, first in my class that day at Penn. 
So who, what do you mean you heard that? You either are or you're not, yeah, okay? Yeah. I wanna to go to that video. It's video four, we're skipping ahead, but but here he is. Before we get to the video though, let me give you some context. He was um, introducing Mike Pompeo and talking about Mike Pompeo's credentials and what a great guy he is. And in the middle of that, he felt the need to brag about himself. He entered at 18 and he ended up graduating first in his class. You know, I heard that rumor a long time ago. I thought it was a rumor of, I don't know, you know, I hear first of it. <laughs> and I've heard it so many times. I've also heard I was first in my class at the Wharton School of Finance. <laughs> you heard that, you heard that. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure if you were first, they would have told you. It wouldn't be a rumor. Yeah. <laughs> there was a rumor that you graduated from Penn. Actually, which is already a grave injustice. And Penn should be mortified for the rest of time that they obvious corruption to let this buffoon graduate from Penn. Yeah, so the Washington Post actually looked into that and they found that Trump's name does not appear on the school's dean's list or on the list of students who received academic honors in the class of 1968. Now, if you never received any academic honors, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be first in your class. Okay, he's such an obvious liar about the military academy. He said, I did very well under the military system, this is a quote. I became one of the top guys at the whole school. Well, great, then you could prove it by releasing the transcripts and we'll all be awed and be like, oh my, God, well, I didn't know he was that high IQ. So why did you then, first of all, when Washington Post asked him 2016, so then will you release the transcripts? Uh, he said, I'm not letting you look at anything, that's a direct quote. I'm not letting you look at anything, okay? What happened, why are you panicked? He sends Cohen in like a thug, et cetera, uh, uh, trying to intimidate all these guys. I got a great quote, quote from what Cohen told him later on a, on a related issue. So it, he, uh, they said, these grabbed uh, the record, as Anna told you. Mm -hmm. They went on to say that it was, quote, a paramount interest in securing those records. <laughs> Well, if you did so well, why is there such a paramount interest in securing the records? And you know what they, uh, the board wanted, the wealthy board of the military academy? They said, we need you to hand over the transcripts yeah. because they're gonna burn them. Because if it ever gets out how stupid Donald Trump is, it'll be deeply embarrassing to all of us. So Jeffrey Coverdale, who was the superintendent at the time, was the individual who hid the records. And he was quoted as saying this, I was given directives, part of which I could follow, but part of which I could not. Because he didn't wanna hand the records to the individuals demanding it. And that was handing them over to the trustees. I moved them elsewhere on campus where they could not be released. It's the only time I ever moved an alumnus's records. So he says he did that in 2013, and he has no idea where those records are today. So uh, this is interesting, um, they did go to chapter 11 eventually. And I'll tell you how they first asked Trump, that's an awesome story I'll get to in one second. Uh, but it didn't work, so in 2015 they closed down, but somebody bought it, a Chinese investor. Interesting, Yeah. Vincent Mo bought it uh, at a bankruptcy auction and, uh, and he said he'd pay off the school's $60 million debt. So presumably, Mo has the record somewhere, he's just gotta go find them. He has no allegiance to Donald Trump. In fact, that leads us to the last part of this story. So they're in a world of hurt. Part of the reason they're responding to everything that the millionaires and the board wants in such an unusual way. And, and everyone that was at the school at the time that's quoted in the Washington Post story says, this, is, this was highly unusual. Normally, alumni don't panic and go, "Oh my God, you gotta get rid of my records because they're so embarrassing. That's unheard of, unheard of. No one who's got good grades wants to get rid of their transcript. Mm -hmm. So let's just acknowledge that. Even MAGA guys, you know that, you know what a dummy he is. Right now there's comments going, yeah, well it's okay, you don't have to be smart to be president. Okay, I mean, I was a dummy too, so what? I know, okay, <laughs> so <laughs> dummy, baby, all right, mm -hmm. last thing. So they go to Trump and they're like, uh, and so they're putting pressure on the school. The reason that these guys uh, cooperate, they don't turn over the, to, for it to be burned, right, uh, or buried or whatever they were gonna do with it. But they do put it away, they sequester it from the rest of the records to uh, assent, basically give their assent to this, why? Because they're about to go bankrupt, right? And then so they then later turn around and go to Donald Trump and go, hey, we're trying to raise $30 million to save the school, you love the school. Okay, can you give us $7 million uh, of the 30, right? Because you're a billionaire, 
and you went Supposedly. to the school and you went to this, da, 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 right? And he's like, uh, Joe, what's in it for me? They're like, what do you mean? You saved the school, it's a school you went to and you love. He's like, no, what do I get, what do I get? Well, they're like, oh, I don't, okay, why don't we name a building after you? And then they gave him a bunch of proposals and he's like, this is not a good business deal, okay? And he got mad at them because one of them spilled Diet Coke on his carpet. Okay. I mean, I, I wouldn't like that either. Okay. <laughs> okay, but here's my favorite part. So he says no because I'm not getting enough out of this, okay? <laughs> it's supposed to be charity. I know you've never heard of it in your life. But this is the insane, gratuitous thing that he said he does afterwards. He said has Cohen send him a letter. Not this is after the transcript thing. This is years after it. Where they come and ask him for the money, he says no. Already he was rude in saying no. Like I don't mean he could say no all day long. The way he said it was pretty rude, but who cares, all right? He asked Cohen send him a letter. Here's what Pizzullo, who was at the school at the time, said. Cohen told us he would love to have enough money to buy the school so he could bulldoze it. Who gets asked for charity and responds like that? Wow, what a monster. What a pathetic little boy who never earned a thing in his life. That's who Donald Trump is. So um, we're gonna go to break uh, and I'm going to quickly create a Patreon account. And I'd like you guys to donate for my uh, individual media business that I'm gonna start since I might not have a job in, I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 he days. personally <laughs> bankrupts me, okay, not the Young Turks. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's about me. Anyway, Patreon account, check it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, I, I, I don't think he's gonna release it. I think that it's so embarrassing for him that you know he's gone to extreme lengths to, to bury his records. And it's not just releasing it, I ain't got a billion dollars to give it to him. He's gotta release it and have better grades than me. Inconceivable. Oh, oh I totally, no, no, you don't I understand. was wondering why you're panicking. No, God. There's like a 0% chance he has better <laughs> grades than me. <laughs> no, as soon as you offered the million dollars, like I blacked out. <laughs> I blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> I got into Columbia Law after going to no, Penn. No, no, of course not. And I didn't have any daddy to get oh, me in. Oh, okay. The chance of okay. him having better grades than me is less than zero. Great, okay, then great bet or great deal. I like it. <laughs> Art of the deal. Art of the deal. Listen to the second half of it. <laughs> okay, that's right. Man, I was wondering, man, like she does not have much confidence in my no, grades. No, no, no. It's just that as soon as you, you mentioned the million dollars, I was like, oh my. Oh my God, and everything else, like I blacked out, couldn't hear anything else. God, it's blacking out, God. Everything slowed down. <laughs> Fun for everybody, all right, uh, tyt.com slash join, as well as our Patreon account. All right. <laughs> Home of Progressives, baby, we'll be right back. We hope you're enjoying this free clip from the Young Turks. If you wanna get uh, the whole show and more exclusive content while supporting independent media, become a member at tyt.com slash join today. In the meantime, enjoy this free sound. All right, back in the Young Church, Jink and Anna with you guys, uh, post heart attack. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I wanna tell you about one of our sponsors, NordVPN. Uh, so uh, they keep telling me these scary things as part of like, honestly promoting them, right? But they're true, and so look, I already have NordVPN, so I'm good, but Anyway, they explain that Facebook tracks locations of users who, cons, uh, who it considers quote unquote credible threats. Now that's good for their employees, so if they, they know your location and if they think you're a threat, etc., they're tracking you. But who else is tracking people based on who they think is a threat? It's madness, don't let them track you at all, okay? NordVPN.com slash TYT protects all of your URLs and they don't know what computer you're using because it looks like you're using a different computer. Uh, and that's because they shouldn't be spying in on us, okay? By the way, uh, just for a little while longer, TYT fans are getting 75% off uh, and they do change these all the time. And uh, and so check it out at nordvpn.com slash TYT. I also wanna let you know that uh, we're gonna be covering the Bernie rallies. Uh, he's doing a whole bunch of them. Look, if Hick and Snoozer had giant rallies, we'd cover them too. Uh, it just hadn't happened yet, okay? So I, it's not that it's preferential treatment, we're just telling you uh, he has these monster rallies. He's gonna have one in Council Bluff, Iowa, for example. Uh, for all these uh, rallies, go to facebook.com slash rebelhq. So if you wanna check out uh, last weekend's rallies, they have videos of Bernie's speech, Nina Turner, Sean King, uh, Ro Khanna, et cetera. 
but you could watch live and you could watch the speeches afterwards too, all at facebook.com slash rebelhq. That's where we gather up all the progressives. Okay, you guys had a bunch of nice things to say. I just have time for only one. YouTube Super Chat P wrote in, hey Jank Anna, I've loved the show for a while now. Love the work you all do at TYT, been helping me through some bad times. Stay strong, left is best. Thank you, really appreciated that. Want to read it because it's a YouTube Super Chat, but also because you stay strong too, brother. Yes. We're gonna do this together and November of 2020. Mm. It could be, we never know, and it could be disastrous, it could be braced for impact, it could, but it could also be potentially the greatest day of our lives. It could. Let us whisper of a dream, yep. okay? All right, Anna, what's next? All right. Following the New York Times explosive report indicating that Donald Trump pressured his staff to grant security clearance to Jared Kushner, we now learn that he did the exact same thing for his daughter, Ivanka. So Trump pressured his then chief of staff, John Kelly, and White House counsel Don McGahn to grant Ivanka security clearance against their recommendations. So of course, the FBI has to do a background check in order to decide whether or not someone should be cleared for a security clearance. And so they did a background check and some issues came up. We don't know what those issues are. However, after concerns were raised by the personnel office following this FBI background check, Trump pushed Kelly and McGahn to make the decision on his daughter and son-in-law's clearances. So it did not appear as if he was tainting the process to favor his family, but then both of them refused. And after that, Trump granted them their security clearances. He's like, I wanna want make it seem like I'm not granting a favor, but. Sir, you would be, because we're, we're against it. Fine, I'm granting them a favor, okay. Now we already know about Jared Kushner and stories that were released last week. Now uh, it, it turns out it's also Ivanka Trump. Uh, they apparently were both such national security dangers that, they, uh, that the officials who normally go through that process thought they should not be given clearance. They are not to be trusted with national security information, wow. And so Trump's like, I, I don't like that. I, I want them to get the information whether they're trustworthy or not. And one, it's his family, okay? My God, if- it's a, It would be I a mean, huge scandal under any other administration as it should be, as it should be. So if Obama had daughters who were old enough during his administration to, to work as his aides and he, push through their security clearances, we would be outraged, we would be angry, right? No, but I'll give you an even better one. If Hillary Clinton had won and she, uh, they flagged Chelsea Clinton as a national security threat. Not a national security threat, that's not fair. Right. As someone who is not trustworthy enough to get clearance. Um, so first of all, there would have been congressional hearings over it. They're like, what 100%. is Chelsea, what's Chelsea Clinton doing? that she can't even have access to the lowest level of information, right? There's secret, there's top secret, there's need to know. She can't clear any of the bars, Jesus, does she have a deal with a foreign entity? What, what, what's going on here? Did she commit a crime we're not aware of? And if Hillary Clinton was like, I'm overruling Democrats that I personally picked to put into these positions and national security officials is saying, no, despite the fact that they say Chelsea should definitely not get one, she's gonna get one anyway, boom. I mean, it would have exploded as the biggest issue in her tenure by an order of magnitude. I know that Trump's criminality has overwhelmed us. He does so many maniacal things, so many illegal things that it's hard to keep up. But just willy nilly giving national security's top secrets to what all of your intelligence folks are saying, do not give it to them, that is extraordinary. What he manages to do so well is remain unapologetic regardless of what potential crimes he's being accused of, regardless of his own rhetoric, which further divides people based on race or based on socioeconomic status. All of these things he does in plain sight. And if he gets criticism for it, and I say if, because at this point, I think people have become like desensitized by him, right? But if he does get criticism, he never apologizes, he'll double down. And it's amazing because I think right now, 
everything in our country, everything about our political system is being tested. I think that our democratic system is being tested. And it really shows you how fragile it is. Because if we don't have a way of holding him accountable for doing the types of things he's doing right now, well then what does it say about us? Does it? We don't have a democracy if that's the case. So look, Ivanka's got a whole number of potential conflicts of interest why she might have been turned down. Business deals with foreign interests and would that sway her? Whether she's gonna get millions, hundreds of millions of dollars from another country. And so can she have access to secrets that affect that country? Those are interesting questions and one the House is asking and that the President should answer. Of course he won't because all he ever does is cover up. He's led a whole life of cover ups for all of his different crimes. But to me the more interesting question is Jared Kushner. So he lied about meeting with the Russian ambassador and with a head of a Russian bank during the transition. After Trump won and before they got into office, why did Jared Kushner go meet with a Russian bank mm -hmm. and then cover that up and not tell people? If there was a legitimate business interest that had nothing to do with the Trump White House, you wouldn't need to lie about it. So there's one other part that, that so I want to So I'm get sorry, to. No, Anna, no, just ahead. to finish the thought. So he might have given Kushner clearance, not just because he's a family member and he's offended that they, that they didn't get the clearance. Kushner might be his mule. And so if Trump can't go meet with the head of a Russian bank that he probably owes money to. And they can't give directives, hey, if you don't want us to collect that money or whatever the deal might be, you better do X. He needs a go between. Here, it appears that there's a few people that he trusts to be a go between. One is Eric Prince. The brother of Betsy DeVos and former owner of Blackwater. He goes and has a secret meeting with the Russians in Seychelles Island. Another is Jared Kushner, who meets with the Russian ambassador and the Russian bank. So Trump, by giving him security clearance, might be protecting his asset that allows him to communicate with the Russians. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely possible. And I think it goes even beyond the Russians because Jared Kushner has a very tight, cozy relationship with the Saudi royals. And so maybe there's a, you know, there's some benefit in giving him security clearance when it comes to issues like that. I don't know. All I know is the way that the security clearance was obtained, both for Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump, is not, it's not typical. It, it, it's more than just screaming nepotism. I mean, there were red flags raised when it came to this FBI background check and he didn't care. He pushed for it anyway. So if you're a right winger who believes that national security is of the utmost importance, and that's what we've been hearing over and over again from the right wing since 9-11, well then what, what's going on now? Are you okay with this? Are you okay with you know people who have been flagged being given security clearance simply because they're Trump's family members? Now, with that said, though, I do want to go to an interview that Ivanka Trump had about three weeks ago on ABC News. And she was asked about Jared Kushner's security clearance, and she had an interesting answer. Take a look. There were some issues early on, and there are a lot of people that question whether you were given special treatment by the president, overriding other Absolutely officials. Not. Can you speak to that? There were anonymous leaks about there being issues, but the president had no involvement pertaining to my clearance or my husband's clearance. Zero. What were the problems early on? There weren't any. Ding, 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 we have a clear and obvious lie. The apple does not fall from the far from the tree. So she's like, oh, there were no problems. She knows full, at a bare minimum, she knows exactly that there were problems. There's no question about that. She could later claim, hey, it wasn't me. I didn't know daddy cleared it for me like he's cleared everything for me in my life. You know, I'm a self made man. That is okay. what her spokesperson is claiming, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> God, what would be phenomenal is if you got Jared Kushner cornered, you think he won't flip on Trump? Is there anything that that Weasley guy wouldn't do? So, okay, anyway. So uh, that's a little bit of speculation, we'll see how that plays out. But we do know this, if you care about national security, you would wanna know why they were flagged and, and whether it was improper for Trump to clear them and, uh, and why he cleared them. So those are perfectly legitimate questions that any sensible Congress would ask any president of any party. Now, you wanna cover up for Trump, that's on you, but these are perfectly reasonable requests. So let's move on to what the House is doing when it comes to all of these allegations and potential crimes. 
The House Judiciary Committee has sent out a document requests to 81 individuals who have ties to Donald Trump. This could be family members of Trump's, some of his aides, some of the individuals who worked on his campaign. And the whole purpose of this is to investigate not just Russia, but more importantly, all of the other potential criminal acts that were raised by Michael Cohen's testimony. So that includes, you know, uh, inflating uh, his finances or his wealth when it came to business dealings, and then lying about how much his assets were worth in order to uh, commit tax fraud, alleged tax fraud. So these are all issues that the House Judiciary Committee wants to look into. And uh, it's become abundantly clear that Trump and his goons have absolutely no interest in cooperating. In fact, here is a statement from Trump on this. I guess we got 81 letters, uh, there was no collusion. That was a hoax, there was no anything. And uh, they want to do that instead of getting legislation passed. 81 people or organizations got letters. It's a disgrace, it's a disgrace to our country. So um, one individual tied to the Trump administration, White House counsel uh, Pat Cipollone rejected House Oversight Committee Chairman Elijah Cummings request for documents related to security clearances for White House personnel. Now that specifically refers to the security clearances that were pushed through for Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump. Donald Trump did that after a, an FBI background check indicated that you know there were some red flags and they should not be given that clearance. Trump pushed those clearances through anyway. Cummings demanded documents related to how the White House was processing security clearances after a report from the New York Times revealed that Trump overruled their concerns of the CIA to give Kushner security clearance. Also, Cipollone claimed that Cummings had failed to establish a legitimate legislative purpose for the request, which included the investigative files of numerous individuals whom the president has chosen as his senior advisors. Um, there were also some allegations that, you know, well, the Obama administration didn't cooperate with investigations into things like Benghazi, except they did. Okay, let's go to graphic 10. The Obama administration released thousands of pages of documents, including a trove of Hillary Clinton's personal emails during House Republicans investigation of the 2012 attack on the US diplomatic compound in Benghazi, Libya. So I love Trump's quote about that. He said, they didn't give one letter, they didn't do anything. They didn't give one letter of the request, except for the fact that they gave thousands, including personal emails. Does he bother to fact check anything? No, of course not. And as soon as Trump says something, there's like a 94% chance it's a lie. <laughs> okay, yeah. you should assume, it's a rebuttable presumption, but you should assume he's lying, because he does it almost every single time. And, and I love the excuse he used in that press conference where he went on a little longer and said, you know, they're doing this instead of working on healthcare. Oh yeah, because you're so concerned about healthcare. You've done so much to do, you know, to help Americans out with, let's say, prescription drug prices, which went up at the beginning of this year. Well, you <laughs> said you were going to negotiate drug prices for the government. You didn't because you're a sellout to the drug companies and your donors. Uh, the only thing you worked on in healthcare is taking healthcare away from people. So, did you think the Democrats in the House were going to help you destroy Obamacare? Not likely. If you want them to work on Medicare for all. Yeah, we can do that, okay, you want us to do that? No, you don't give a damn about any of those things. All you're saying is, please don't investigate me, because it's totally true. And last part is, after going off on the investigators saying Nadler, who's on the oversight committee and had asked for these requests, etc., said that he, the chairman had, quote, gone stone cold crazy, he was harassing innocent people. But added, I cooperate all the time with everybody. But wait, you're saying you won't cooperate on anything at all with anybody. I know, that's why I cooperate with everyone all the time. Well, I mean, that goes to how he will switch talking points from one moment to the next. So just yesterday, he made that statement, right? He was asked whether he plans on cooperating, and he said that he would. And then he started taking a more angry tone today. Yeah. So he he will, you know, he goes through these extreme mood swings. Because he's not mentally stable, 25th Amendment. By the way, Nadler is the head of the Judiciary Committee, not the Oversight Committee. And 
Trump will fight this tooth and nail. And as to how it'll get resolved, that's a good question because it'll take a while to go through the courts. And and just as a matter of politics, I get it. The Trump team's guilty and they're gonna want to stonewall and they might be able to run the clock out because they, they have less than two years. It takes so long to get through the courts. Right. The courts are reluctant to weigh in on political issues. So if he just, uh, it, this is a rare case where he might actually build a wall, <laughs> okay? And that wall might actually work. Uh, so we'll have to see how the politics of it goes. But in terms of policy, the Democrats are completely right to ask for these legitimate requests uh, of things that are deeply concerning and the Republicans certainly would have done likewise and 10 times more. Yeah, I mean, they did that with the Benghazi investigations. And I hope that Democrats remain strong on this issue and that they don't just, you know, take this investigation dodging as a sign that they should give up. Which so. is a usual sign that they have, but but lately, because of nudging from certain folks, they've been better. They so, have been, they have been. That's yeah, fair. and so, uh, and good work here by Nadler and the others. We gotta take a break. Uh, when we come back, we are going to do a deep dive into this so-called anti-Semitism uh, controversy involving Representative Ilhan Omar. Two big twists in that, okay? Uh, one, did the Democrats ask her to be in favor of Israel? That's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. And then the Republican hypocrisy is stunning. We've given you some of the quotes before, but not all of them. Whoa, we got the mother load. So don't miss any of it. And if you miss any part of today's show, uh, tyt.com slash join members get all the show anytime they want. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> 